need this many this is just what I have let's show you a little bit more detail now I don't know what your current situation is but my microphone package may look extensive but I'll be the first one to tell you that it's far from impressive the microphones that I run specifically my wireless microphones which we're gonna be talking more about today it's not even industry standard if I was to show up trying to use this as a rider I'd be very quickly shot down but since most of you are mobile DJs as am I it doesn't really matter but I will tell you that bang for buck I do believe that the wireless system that I have is probably one of the best on the market I use the GTD Audio 622 wireless microphone package. It helps that these are clones from Shure microphones, from the capsule to the shaft, even some of the menu settings inside of the microphone are pretty similar to that of a Shure ULX or BLX series. Now I have snuck these in uh, on shows before, you know, and nobody's really known the difference because they sound pretty good. And at the end of the day, good mic sound comes down to good EQing. It always helps to have a good basis point, but you can correct a lot of this stuff with an EQ, but it's not gonna be something that you're gonna correct with a simple three band EQ uh, to get something to sound really good. A good parametric EQ, 31 band on a channel, it doesn't matter, it needs to be tuned. All right, so since the guys that are watching this video are probably mobile DJs or there of the like, we're gonna be talking mostly today about vocal mics. I have two options, wireless or wired, depending on the application I'm gonna be using them in, but my most used are the GTD Audio 622s. I also have wired microphones, such as a Shure SM57, which is pretty much the industry standard and probably one of the most used microphones on the planet. Now I also have a Shure SM57 clone, which we'll A-B test today. I'd like to know as well as you, is the extra money really worth it? So we'll A-B test them and we'll figure out that for ourselves. Now I also have an Audix OM2, which is gonna be used in the same applications as the Shure SM57. It may not be as popular, but it does sound pretty good. We're gonna test all these today. Now the one thing I like about the GTD system as opposed to some of the others out there is you can buy it with either two handhelds, two body packs, or one of each, which gives you a few options. And I went ahead and bought extra handhelds. So I can use up to four handhelds at one time or two handhelds and two lavaliers, which I've never had to do. Also, you can buy these handhelds individually, and I know that a lot of the microphones in this same price range only sell it as a package and not individually. So if you have a catastrophe happen, like the mic drop, it's not a big deal. You don't have to replace the whole system. The handheld itself is fairly inexpensive. Instead of replacing a $1,000 microphone, you're only gonna be out about 80 bucks, which is good. So let's go ahead and A-B test these microphones, and that way you can base your own opinion on what mine sound like, and then, do your own shopping from there. Now, like I said, these microphones are far from the best, but I think bang for buck, it's probably one of the best on the market. Well, let's get to the audio test. The audio you're hearing right now is coming directly from the 622 handheld. I've got all of my EQs set to flat, that way you can base your opinion off what it would sound like prior to being EQ'd. These things have plenty of range. I've gotten 150 up to 200 feet out of them before experiencing dropouts. Anytime you're gonna be over 50 or 60 feet, I advise getting some D-fins, some people call them shark fins, something that's gonna carry the signal much further than the onboard antennas that come with the microphones. Your experience may vary depending on what metro city you're in or what, uh, what stage you're on, but these sound pretty good. 
The audio you're hearing now is coming from the 622 body pack. Now, I will say that I had to buy this ear set microphone separately simply because the ones that come with the pack look kind of goofy, and I don't think they sound all that great. They require a lot more EQing than this microphone here. I'll leave a purchase link down below in the description, but I think these overall look better, and they sound better too. Now, doesn't this look a tad bit ridiculous? This is the microphone that came with the kit itself. I think it looks kind of goofy, almost like a Garth Brooks or a Billy Blanks or, you know, I'm like in the FBI or something, but not really. Um, and you can probably tell that it doesn't sound as good either. At least I hope it I hope my point is proven on the playback of this. This is all blind. I'm not actually hearing this live. I'll hear it when I edit it down. But if nothing else, I think it looks stupid. So that's why I bought the other microphones. This is the lapel. I've got it clipped on my shirt just like anybody else would if you were micing up a preacher or you know a, a spoken word guest or somebody that's just going to be doing a little bit of talking. I've got it down here uh, so you may not be able to see it in the shot. I don't think it sounds good. Um, like I said, we'll see all of this on the playback. Um, but I just, you know, I think it looks a little bit ridiculous. Maybe if you take the windscreen off, it might look a little bit better. Uh, but I think there's a better microphone for the job, which is why I bought the external ear sets, which look better and, in my opinion, sound a lot better too. Now I'm using the Shure SM58, pretty much industry standard on any stage. Um, it's going to sound good. You probably think it sounds a little bit flat, but for live sound purposes, that's kind of what you want. Uh, you want it to be as flat as possible, and then you can EQ it from front of house. I'm most interested in testing the clone to see if it sounds anything like this microphone. So let's unplug this one, plug the clone in. Now this is an SHS OM500 vocal microphone, pretty much identical to the SM58 from the outside. Uh, on the inside, I'm pretty sure it's got a different capsule and it doesn't weigh as much, which leads me to believe it's probably not as good quality and it may not sound as good. Again, we'll listen to all this on playback, but I'm most interested to see what this mic sounds like versus the higher priced SM58. Now I'm using the Audix OM2. I got this one for cheap, otherwise I probably would have bought a Shure, but it, it does sound good. I just like to have things that match. The basis of any vocal rig needs to be a combination of wireless units and or wired units. The last thing you want to do is get to a gig and either not have batteries or something happen to your wireless and not have a backup. I would suggest buying a good wireless kit and then supplementing that with a good wired situation should you need it. Now, it goes without saying that if you're going to buy wired microphones, of course, you need to invest in good cables. The cable sometimes can be the weakest link of your entire system. So you need to invest in good cable along with a decent set of microphones. So if you're like me, where you're transitioning from being a mobile DJ over into a production company, you need to invest in a good set of instrument mics so you can mic guitar cabinets, uh, snare drums, or use something as a vocal mic, the SM57 is definitely your answer. Like I said earlier, they even use these for the President. They actually sell a kit called the Presidential Kit where it's two SM57s mounted on their own stand. Um, but this is probably the most versatile mic that I own. I can use it on essentially anything and get a good sound out of it. Switching over to my condenser microphone, this is the Audix F15. It's a budget condenser that can be used for overheads or, you know, really a plethora of things similar to an SM57. The one thing you've got to worry about with this guy, though, is if you're using a small budget mixer, it may not have phantom power, which is a lot of times what condenser mics require. Um, all in all, this is a good sounding mic that I use all over the place. I can use this for uh, miking stringed instruments. It makes it sound pretty good. Uh, drum overheads, spoken word, you know, you can almost use this as a shotgun mic if you're doing some video stuff. Um, condenser mics really have a plethora of things that they can do but require a little bit more attention because you get a lot more outside noise. This guy right here is my AKG Perception 170. Just like the Audix F15, Plethora uses requires a little bit more care. Now I'm not going to talk into my drum mics, which are my PG56s and my Beta 52, specifically because they were built for drums. It would do you nor me absolutely no good for me to talk into them, so we'll just skip those. I will have drum covers posted on my channel soon, so you'll be able to hear those mics in action. Believe me, bang for buck, 
they sound pretty good. The Shure Beta 52 is probably one of the most industry used kick drum microphones on the planet, so I know it sounds good. Be on the lookout for drum covers coming up soon. Now that I've shown you my microphone package, now it's up to you to form your own opinion. The big thing that you need to do is research. I've got the GTD 622s for my wireless simply because I looked up on Amazon and showed they had really good reviews and the microphones themselves were at a price where if I was to not like them when I got them, I could either A, return them or B, not be out very much and continue my shopping. But I was just completely blown away. You can look on the website and it's got hundreds of reviews from happy customers. That's what I advise you to do when shopping for your microphone system, wireless or wired. Uh, form your own opinion, but also look at the reviews. If people aren't happy with a product, believe me, they'll tell you. But it fits my needs pretty perfectly. It's durable, it's affordable, and they sound good. Everything can't be perfect though. T-Mobile just bought a wide space of bandwidth that a lot of wireless microphones use. And it's all in the 600 megahertz range, which is what the GTDs operate on. So here in a couple years, these microphones are gonna be obsolete. But at the price point, I'm not going to tell you not to go out and buy one because I think you will have gotten your use out of it when the time comes for you to get something else. I bought these almost five years ago, so I've gotten plenty of use out of them and they're still kicking. I've got two of their systems with four handhelds and two body packs. You add that all up together, it doesn't even compete with some of the mid-level Sure stuff that's out there or Sennheiser, AKG, or the bigger brands. At the time, it just made financial sense to me. Going forward, I'll just have to shop around and see what I can get when it comes time for these to be replaced, which is probably gonna happen pretty soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, hit the bell right beside that subscribe button so you can be notified anytime I release any new content. Leave me some comments down in the comment section. I'd like to know what you guys use for your own rig, whether it be instrument, vocal, wireless, wired, whatever. I'd just like to know. Microphones can be a daunting task trying to find the right one that fits your budget because there's microphones from 20 bucks all the way up to 10 or $15,000. Uh, I'm not telling you to go out and spend that much, but I would say do your research. Until next time, DJ Woo Pig, may the odds be forever in your favor. Later. Oh.